Murderer John Venables' latest bid for parole continues today in a closed-door hearing to ensure the protection of his new identity. The parents of Venables' victim, James Bulger, have been barred from attending. Venables was firstly released on licence in 2001 after serving almost eight years behind bars for the murder of two-year-old James. He's since been recalled to jail twice in 2010 and 2017, both times for possessing indecent images of children. James's father, Ralph, is devastated at the prospect of his release. And speaking to us on Talk Today, our very, very first show last month, he told us why Venables, in his opinion, remains a danger to the public. I could never forgive him. No. And like, like you say, you've got children of your own, and <clears throat> would you want him getting out and being near your children, putting them back into the public, where, where I think he will do this again? Mm. Who's going to be held responsible for it? The parole board, each and every one of them, who, who release them, should be held responsible for it. So our question this morning is, should child killers ever be granted the opportunity for parole? Joining us to discuss this is criminal defence lawyer Paul Britton, who believes that dangerous criminals should never be released, and the director of Freedom Law UK. We're delighted to have him on, Luke Gillis, who thinks a humane justice system should always recognise the possibility of redemption. Welcome to you both. Um, I said to you off air, I, I, I struggle with this because I know his parents. Um, Luke, opinion? Well, our system is built on redemption and we don't have an American-style system where sentences are just stacked on top of one another. We recognise that people can change and I think that's a very important principle. John Venables poses unique challenges for the justice system, there's no doubt about that, but he is one of the most closely monitored uh, ex-prisoners in the country. It didn't work very well because he went back to prison twice for sexual offences against kids. Very true, but... Challenges in... to the judicial system or challenges yeah. to the British public because he might be amongst us. So, living in a civilised democracy, we have to live with the possibility, however difficult, that people will re-offend. The opposite possibility is that we lock them up forever and that's not what we tend to do. We recognise that there is a risk that people will re-offend and we try to do everything we can to prevent that. Um, but there is limits to what we can do. John Venables will be considered by the parole board. They will consider files of evidence and reports into the possibility that he will re-offend. If the family are unsatisfied with that decision, they can judicially review that decision, which will then go to the High Court. Paul... This is a system of protections which is worth having, and the alternative is draconian. Paul, I want to be careful here, because it's obviously a very sensitive issue. Ultimately, we're talking about the murder of a child. This happened when the two killers were 10 years old, so they were tried as children, ultimately. But as an adult, we know that Venables has reoffended with different offences, possession of uh, abuse images yeah. of children. Well, that's absolutely right. And, I mean, just going on what Luke has just said to us, what civilised society would allow these people back into the, as Jeremy said, the public domain. We're talking about anonymity. Oh, do we not have a right to know who lives next door to us if our children are playing in the streets? What jobs will these people do, Venables in particular? Are we, will he be a bin man? Will he come and collect our bins whilst your children are playing in the streets? Will he be a school teacher? Mm. You know, what, what contribution can these people make? And that was what I was society? saying to you, Luke, because, and Paul's made the point, you talk about he's one of the most watched prisoners. It didn't work, did it? Here's, my, it, it here's, here's my thing, right? And, and, I, and I'm really trying to keep a lid on it, because I know his parents, right? You talk about a draconian society. Let me throw an analogy out there for all the do-gooders, right? There are evil people in the world, and evil people are not rehabilitatable, if that's even a word, right? Evil people who murder <coughs> kids and who then re-offend when they've, given the, they've been given the chance to be rehabilitated twice, in my very humble opinion, the majority of this country would prefer that piece of scum to be locked up forever and the key to be thrown away. And, and I'm sure your, your principles are, are well meant, but I'm telling you, mate, you are missing the heartbeat of what the British public... And I think it's a shame. We did it on the show. Alex Chalk, the Justice Minister, uh, disgraceful. He should have taken this. The parents are barred from appearing. It's a disgrace. I hope the parole board, amongst them, have a child. Because having a child, you might have an opinion. And you've got kids, and it amazes me. How would how would you feel taking Paul's thing? How would you feel if this bleh, was in your society and somehow, I'm, not, I'm just asking you, got involved with your kids? How would you live with that, Luke? 
Uh, there's a saying amongst lawyers that hard cases make bad law. What that means is that when you are presented with a difficult set of facts, you don't change a principle, an important long-standing principle, in order to uh, accommodate an uncomfortable set of facts. The High Court in 2019 found that uh, there was an ongoing risk of John Venables suffering fatal consequences if his identity was made public. Then oh, dear. Then what about Jamie Bolger? Well, now you're making an argument for extrajudicial punishment, Jeremy. So, think about that. You're making an argument for a society where people can take matters into their own hands. Mm. And I know you, under you feel very strongly... We all feel very strongly about the murder of Jamie Bolger. But what we don't want is a society where people can be vigilantes to the extent that people suffer serious Then harm. lock him up. OK, so we just want, I just want to bring this to the other murderer, cos there were two people yep. responsible yeah. for the death of Jamie. The other person has been released, has a new identity and hasn't re-offended and gone back to prison. What do you say to that? Well, because I mean, the, the parole board would say that that was... You know, it's a better word. Is, is it, a OK, success. so they say that is a successful rehabilitation. Yeah. Yes, okay. so it's possible. So how many offenders have to re-offend, and we're talking about children right now, mm. for it to be wrong? If you had 100 criminals mm -hmm. and only 1% re-offended, and that offence involved a child again, mm -hmm. shouldn't the other 99 remain in prison? Uh, loads of comments. <laughs> when does, we're, it, we're, when does it We are conflating okay? two things here, which I think it's really important to point out. We're, we're conflating um, a murder with child sex offences, and what we should He's be talking... Yes, no, I understand that, but we're talking... We, want, we need to talk about things legally and what can change. My opinion... The, the legal system should change. Yes, but my opinion and your opinion, no matter how strongly we feel about this, doesn't matter. No. Because what needs to happen is legal change, if anything is going to change at all. So what are we saying? Either that... Children, because he was 10 years old when he committed this crime, when both of them committed this crime, either children should be eligible for life in prison or people as adults who are in possession of child abuse images should be in prison for life. Are any of those possible? Well, I think, firstly, uh, the alternative that seems to be being argued on this side of the debate is that, basically, we should be able to... Uh, take matters into our own hands. I think that's always... No, that's not what's being said. I'm sorry, you're, no, misrep no, no, no. you're misrepresenting. Well, not... let, 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 let me just explain to you. Yes, yes, what emotionally I'm involved... What would you change? Well, what? Life, life what would you change? Life, if I was the Justice life. Secretary, I would throw the damn key away. I don't believe that... Um, yes, I take Nick's point. I think it's a really salient legal point. They were ten. The point that nobody's made is John Thompson has been successful. The scum that is John Venables has been given two opportunities by a parole board who patently didn't see the sort of human being he was and let him out, and he has already done twice enough to be put back inside. You well, talk about public aren't opinion. They're taken by people like you. They're taken by the parole board. I hope the, the parole, parole board is so perfect. Kid. Luke, then I'm I, sure they do. I have to really? ask you. Parole board, we're talking about the possession of, in, of, of child abuse images by somebody who's previously murdered children. Yes. How on earth can a parole board make the decision that this person person is safe to be released into society yeah, if, yeah. in prison, they don't have access to child abuse images or access to children. How can a parole board possibly know how that individual is going to act outside of prison? Well, we have to have these decisions taken in a cold and rational environment like the parole board. Now, there are arguments that the parole board could be reformed. I think there are changes that could be made. But, obviously, those decisions have to be taken on consideration of evidence, not emotion. And the thing that but, we are doing oh, here today is arguing for the basis emotion, of legal changes that. on the basis of emotion. Oh, how, That's how always can a mistake. We, how can we get... Got to be really quick. Sorry. I, I, I would love to keep this going. <laughs> Ten course. seconds. Go Sum on. it up. What's the question? Uh, how can we possibly have evidence that somebody is not going to reoffend if oh. the children are not in prison? Well, in John Zenerville's case, we have have evidence that he will reoffend. There we go. Because guys, the I really it's a no-brainer.